Bible. <clears throat> so far I've had about four Bibles. This is one of them. This, uh, this Bible I actually had before I went to Bible school and while I was at Bible school. But we'll look at something in there uh, today. <clears throat> The last class we went over, we covered reading. Uh, reading in the New Testament, reading in the Old Testament, and just reading in general. Did you guys happen to look at that chapter in there with those two diagrams? That one specifically, where it had, uh, where it had like the, not the purpose of the scripture and then the purpose of the scripture? Oh, okay. That one right there. Okay, perfect. That, uh, that, the reason why I put, why I kind of distorted that, that believer like that is because there's a verse, a passage that says, uh, knowledge puffeth up but love edifies. And you end up being unproportional. And the thing with that is that it's the knowledge of man that puffs up. It's always the knowledge of man that puffs up. The knowledge of God is Christ, but the knowledge of God who is Christ can only make, be made known by the Father. And that is a very humbling thing not a puffing up thing at all. It's a very humbling thing. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I wanted us to look at that. I did cover that. Okay. This next uh, chapter is basically the practical, just practical things you can do. Uh, maybe some of you guys are already doing this. Uh, I don't know. I just throw some things out there that I've done uh, and that I do, that helped me in my own studies. Uh, <clears throat> kind of like, like highlighting. Uh, do you guys use uh, pencil markers at all? Or uh, color pencils? That's it, color pencils? Yes, no? No? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I, I, uh, I've used color pencils in the past, in fact, this Bible, I marked up pretty good using color pencils. And I will go ahead and show you guys just a little bit of it, kind of get an idea of what I mean. Can you see how it's kind of highlighted different colors there? I know the lighting's not all that great. But uh, what I did was basically, as I was reading, and as I read, if something got my attention, I would just like highlight it. Uh, and I, what I did, I, I came up with like my own highlighting code, color code thing. And just to give you an example, I'll just rattle some things off. Like for the color red, I had it to mean salvation in life. So anything that I was reading in the scriptures that equated to salvation or life, I would highlight it in red. Uh, I have pink for love and forgiveness. Blue, I have faith, hope, trust. Uh, green, I have guidance, instruction, wisdom. Purple, I have royalty, victory, strength, power, the cross. Uh, orange, I have promise or prophecy, which is fulfilled in Christ. Uh, yellow, I have blessing, abundance, sunrise, oh, no, not sunrise, sureness, light. Yeah, sunrise, sunrise, <laughs> and light. It's hard to read the yellow color. Uh, and then black, I have basically like sin and death. So I would, 
I would, as I, I would be reading, I would just like underline it or highlight the whole sentence. The reason why I used uh, pencil colors was because it, if you use a marker or a pen, it may go through the other end of your Bible, or not the Bible, but the page. It'll, it'll bleed into the back side of the page. But that's one of the things you can do uh, as far as like things that get your attention. So then, like if I just open this, and right here I see green, then I know that that is going to be concerning the wisdom of God. Anywhere when, when I look at any color, if I look at a, here's one pink, there's, there's according to his abundant mercy, there's his loving kindness. Uh, but just things like that, Jesus Christ from the dead, uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, there is, there is the power of God, who is Christ himself. So that can probably help uh, just in your reading and your studies. Uh, this is an old Bible. <clears throat> I had this when I was in Bible school. Center column references. Do, do you all know what I mean uh, when I say center column references? Yes, no. The what? Okay. All right. Some, some Bibles have what they call center column references. And do you see how right here you've got the column of the Scripture? Then on the other side, you've got the column of the Scripture. But in the middle, you've got some references. Wow, that's pretty big. Y'all can see that? It may be pretty blurry. I'll show it to that one, too. <laughs> Some Bibles have center column references, or cross-references is what they are, cross-references. Uh, it's always, I, I like to use the cross-references. It's always good just to see why they, they had a particular verse linked with another verse. And I think in this uh, book, in our lesson book, I've got an example of some center column references somewhere, because I was looking over it. Yeah, center, yeah, using references, okay? And uh, <clears throat> so basically what, what it does is, is like if you find a verse, that's, that I'll just give an example, that says, uh, where Jesus says this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And if it has a center column reference, for that, you would look at that, and maybe the reference would be this other verse where Jesus uh, tells, I think it's Martha or Mary, I am the resurrection and the life. And maybe there's another reference that says, uh, like in 1 John chapter, or excuse me, not 1 John, but the Gospel of John chapter 1, in him was the life, and the life was the light of men. So all, basically what it does, it ties verses together that are pretty much saying the same thing. So that's basically what a center column reference is. It's good to use them. And it's good also to write in your own center column references, to write in your own references. Uh, <clears throat> do you remember when we were, a couple classes ago, I think, we were looking at a passage and I went ahead and read my own comment to the side and it had to do with the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It was, it was like, it was either last class or the class before that. That is like my own reference where I jot something off to the side. It's always good to do that. Always good to do that. <clears throat> and it's good to do it. Uh, I don't know if you guys write in your Bibles, but it's okay to write in your Bible. Uh, I, I would, if you do write in your Bible, or if you, will be, if you begin to write in your Bible, I will recommend this. Use a pencil, because you can always erase uh, something if you wrote something wrong. Uh, like if you have a little bit of dyslexia or something like that, which I do, that's where I, I write something and I don't spell it right or something, or, or my numbers change. And then I have to erase it and write the number in the right order. Anyway. 
using a pencil like that is really good uh, for writing in references. Another thing, and these are just uh, the practical things for Bible study that we can use, the practical things in reading that will, that will help us catch our attention and continue directing our attention unto Christ Himself. Okay? Another thing is the concordance. See that big bad boy? Look at that. That thing's huge. Believe it or not, I used to travel with this. <laughs> Talk about a big backpack. I don't do that anymore. And you can see just the difference. Do y'all see that? That thing's like huge. Or, look at this. I mean, technology is crazy. Look at this. You can see the difference right here between, between carrying this concordance around and carrying, like, this is my phone around. What's in here is this and a whole lot more. It is crazy. But uh, this is a strong concordance. This is the concordance I was telling you guys about that I went out and I went out and bought it the day that I ended up needing it. And from that point on, I've used a concordance since. Now, of course, I'm using it uh, in digital format, but I used this guy for a very, very, very long time. But using the concordance uh, is really good. And in this, in this way, let me ask you this. Do you guys have uh, any like Bible software or Bible apps by chance? Yes? Okay. Using the concordance is basically like doing a search in one of your um, Bible programs or Bibles at Bible apps. You can type it in there. Uh, it, of course, it's easier with the electronic version than the old school hard book, but you get the same results. And what it does is, is it can help you, let's say this. <clears throat> Let me know if you guys have heard of, heard this verse before. In the light of the king's countenance. You guys ever heard that verse? No? That's part of, that's part of a real good verse. A real good verse. In the light of the king's countenance. All right, so what I'm going to do, this, this, the concordance has every single word in the Bible. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to look at the word light, and then I may look at the word countenance. But I'm going to see if we can find it in this. And, uh, hey, Lindsay, did you get, were you guys able to get a concordance there? Oh, look at that. Oh, you guys got them too. Look at that. Well, see, you know how big they are. Look, uh, look. let's try to find that passage to find exactly where it is, because I'm not sure where it is either. <laughs> but the phrase that I'm thinking of, and see, that's the thing. Sometimes we can be reading a passage of Scripture, and then all of a sudden, a, a different passage of scripture, scripture comes to mind, but we don't know where it's at. Well, us, usually we, we remember like a phrase. So, in the light of the king's countenance, so uh, look, up, look up light, the word light, and let's see if we can find it. Wow, it could be anywhere. Okay, how are how are you guys doing?
in the light of the king's countenance. So you can try looking up light and you can try looking up countenance or countenance. Now with the Strong's Concordance, it doesn't give you the full sentence, but it'll give you a portion of the sentence. But you pretty much have to go verse by verse trying to find it, or phrase by phrase trying to find it. You guys find it? What, what, what? Proverbs 16.15, okay. Okay, yes. Proverbs sixteen fifteen. In the light of the king's, well, this is the New King James Version that I'm reading out of right here. In the light of the king's face is life. You can just stop right there. Isn't that an awesome verse? In the light of the king's face is life. That's a really good verse. Jesus said this also. <laughs> he said, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. And then he says this, And you will not come to me that you might have that eternal life. And it's all, all in him. So that's a good, that's a really good verse. Okay, so that is basically how you use the, the concordance. Now, uh, another thing we want to do, do you still have the concordance open where you found it? Good, perfect. Let's look at the actual word light in that verse, all right? So, have you guys done this before? Yes, yes, oh, everyone's done this. Well, for those who haven't done it, we're gonna do that, all right? We never know how far reaching these things are gonna go. So, let's go ahead and look at, um, I actually did this in a Bible school uh, in, down in Mexico. We all had concordances out, and we did a class on just using the Strong's. But um, let's go ahead and look at what that word light actually means, all right? And off to the right, it's Strong's number 216, okay? So let's go to the Hebrew and Chaldee Dictionary because it's Old Testament and look at that Strong's number 216 all right yeah it's it, it'll be on in the back it's the Hebrew and Chaldee Dictionary. That's, what, that's one of the nice things about this particular concordance. It has the actual dictionaries in the back. Uh, I'll just go ahead and read it. Do you all find it?
Okay, you guys got it? All right. So it's basically uh, that particular term is from a different Strong's number 215. And this actual term means illumination or luminary in every sense, including lighting, happiness, etc. And then it's translated into English as bright, clear, day, light, lightning, morning, sun. So that's a, the strong concordance is like a basic definition from, for a word uh, in the Bible. It's, it's a really good definition. It's, it's, a, it's kind, of, kind of gives you a basic definition. It's kind of like this. Um, it's kind of like a English Spanish dictionary or like a English German dictionary depending on what language you know and what language you're looking at. So it's, it's, it's really good for quick reference using the Strong's. All right, let's see what I've got. Yeah, using the center column references, we went over that a little bit. Using the concordance, mm -hmm. we just did that. And you guys, you guys have all the, yeah, you do, because you, you printed out the lesson book. Good, you have it. Uh, my own definitions, not my own definitions, but the definitions that I copied into that. Okay. All right, now when using, uh, back to our, our center column references, when using the references, you always want to never like limit anything. You, you never want to limit anything. Never, 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 remember last week? Uh, I was actually joking with you all, please understand me. Uh, when it comes when it comes to knowing the Lord, t to me that's the greatest the greatest thing God presents to us is is He offers to us to know His Son, and that is one of the greatest things that could ever be presented to a soul. Um, of course, to know the Son, one has to be born again. That's the only way a person can truly know the Son of God is if he's present and he has to be present. So therefore, the soul must be born again. And with that, we should never, never say, because we can, we can truly never come to say, like, I've got it, you know, because when, when we say that, what we do We've taken whatever we think we have and pretty much made it into like a little message or a teaching or a doctrine. And see, we, we do that. We do that with, with things that we read out of the scripture, with things we hear from, others, from what others say, or with what we see in videos. Uh, having to do with the Lord, we automatically do that. But see, this is it. This is the thing right here. We cannot do that with life. You can't do that with the Lord. It's, Im it's impossible. All right? It's impossible. I, uh, <clears throat> I, was, <laughs> I was thinking just, just earlier... Uh, I watched I watched a movie. Forgive me on this one. I watched a, a movie like a couple, two three weeks ago, but it was one of the night in the muse, night at the museums movies, and uh, the scene. You know, forgive me for this. The scene. I don't know if you guys have watched it or not. The scene is where uh, like the cowboy and the Roman soldier are watching this video of cats 
trying to catch the little laser light pointer, you know? Do you guys know what a laser, you guys know what a laser light pointer is, right? It's like a little deal and they shine it and people use it for lectures sometimes. They shine it on a chalkboard or shine it on this or that. Well, what they did, they were shining the light on the ground and these cats were trying to catch it and they would move the light and they could never catch the light. Well, think of it this way. You can't catch light at all. It's impossible. You, you can't. You can't. The minute you think you do, then what you have actually accomplished is that you are holding darkness in your hand. And it's not light. Try it. Try it. I mean, the whole room right here, even where you guys are at, it's filled with light. And remember, the light, in the light of the king's countenance is life. Proverbs, what was it? 15, 16, 16, 15. We, we can't capture light. Remember the verses where Jesus says, I am the light of the world. If any man followeth me, he will no longer walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, I, I, I did the example just a while ago, and you guys can do it if you want. But see, the reason you can see my hand is because there's light. Light is present. And I can see that there's light, you know, right here. But if I try to capture it, if I try to hold on to it, if I try to catch it, if I let you peek in there, all you're going to see is darkness. And it's true. I mean, do, do this. Cup your hands, everybody, cup your hands like this. And just kind of peek in there. Just take a peek inside. There's no light there anymore. It's darkness. And that's exactly what happens when we're reading the scripture, listening to someone, or viewing something concerning the Lord. And we got it when we could think and understand in our mind and say, I've got it. No, we don't. What we have is darkness. What we have at that moment is our own understanding. And what, I, what, what we uh, used a while ago, the center column references, they are good. They are, they are excellent to use if your Bible has them. And they're excellent uh, to, write your own, to write your own references in. That, that is an excellent thing to do, to write your own scripture references in. But that's not, that's not life. It's, it's, it's not, it's not the Lord. It's about the Lord. It's declaring the Lord, but it's not the person. So we take that, we take those center column references, we take our own references, we gather it all up, we continue reading, adding more, you add more, and you add more, and then we present those to the Holy Spirit. So that He can take everything that we present to Him to continue to prepare the ground of our heart to turn to see the true one that they're declaring, the person that they're declaring. The, using the, the concordance, using the strong concordance, Uh, is the same thing. I remember 
talking with a brother once, not there at the Bible school, it was somewhere else, talking, talking with a brother once, and we, we were just talking, and he said, I know what, I know what this passage means now. And I said, well, why? I mean, how? How do you know what it means? And, and his response was something like, well, I looked up the words in the Strong's Concordance, so now I know what it's saying. And I'm thinking, no, we don't know what it's saying. Even if we know exact, the exact definitions, the exact terms, we still don't know what it's saying. Only God Himself knows what it's saying. And the way He makes us, us to know what it's saying is to show, make known His Son who is the person of it. Okay? Once again, uh, the verses, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. In Him was light and the light was the life of men. No, oh, wait, in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. All these terms describing Him. And yet, you, you can think of it this way. In reading, the, in reading the Scriptures, we should never come to the point where we can say, okay, now I understand this passage. And then stop there, because what we do when we do that is this right here again. And there's no life in it. Never with the Lord, okay? With the Lord, never hold on to things so tightly that the Lord can't make known His Son or better, better put this way, make known the gloriousness of His Son in a greater way. Okay? Um, what's the verse I'm thinking of? Okay. Now, have you guys heard of this verse where the Lord is speaking to Joshua? This day will I begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel. Have you got, are, are you guys familiar with the verse? No. Yes, no? No? Okay. Let me look it up. See, modern day concordance. It's actually quicker than pulling out the, the old one. Let's see. All I'm going to do is do the search here, magnify. It's uh, Joshua chapter 3, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel. And just, just that phrase. This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel. There's several things happening just, just in that phrase of that verse in Joshua chapter 3, verse 7. For one, God Himself is going to begin something. Begin. And that the word begin is very different than like the word, like if God would have said, today I'm going to do this. Begin basically means like it's going to start and continue. Remember the verse again where Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed and the truth shall make, shall make you free? This day will I begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel. And if, if you think of like a magnifying glass, it's, you're looking at something, but you take the magnifying glass, and when you start looking at it with a magnifying glass, the, the, the object doesn't change. It just becomes bigger to you. 
Well, here it is the way with the Lord. Jesus is great. He doesn't change. He is awesome. He doesn't change. He is glorious. He doesn't change. The thing is, we don't know how great He is. We don't know how glorious He is. We don't know how awesome He is. But God the Father wants to make that known unto our heart, to make His Son known so we can know how great He is. And I know I'm not saying it right. So that, here, here's what it is, so that His knowing of His Son can govern our hearts. Because the knowing of God the Father who knows His Son is greater than our own knowing by far. By far. Okay? So this day will I begin to magnify Thee in the sight of all Israel. And that, once again with that word begin, it means to continue. So even when we're looking at a passage in the Scripture and we see the Lord in that passage, then the Lord is even greater in that passage than what we even see at that moment. There's a verse, and I want to go ahead and look it up real quick. And it's uh, in the New Testament. And it's Paul. And I may find it. Yes. Nope. Wrong verse. Forgive me. I'll find it here in a second. Yes, here it is. It, it is, Paul. It's in Ephesians chapter 3. Let's start with verse 16. Verse 16. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth of and length, and depth, and height. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. The length, the depth, the breadth, and height. Well, the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. That is the fullness of the one who's present. And the thing is, is like this, and here, here's a perfect example. And I use, I'm, I'm going to use this example because here's where my studies have been. We all know Abraham, right? And the first thing that Abraham found when he entered into Canaan was the Lord himself. The Lord appeared. And it says it that way. The Lord appeared unto Abraham, or excuse me, unto Abram. The Lord appeared unto Abram. Abram saw the Lord. At that moment, Abram could have said, I've got it. I've seen all there is to see. That's it. I've got it. Remember our example? I've got it. I've seen all there is to see. But that's not the case. Now, in one respect, Abram could very well have said, and it, it's true to say, I have seen all all that there is to see because he's seen the Lord. But see, 
It doesn't end with one scene, seeing, but it's continuing to behold the one who's present in the land. It's continuing to see the fullness of Christ that's present. It's continuing to see the one who's present. Okay? Um, I think, I think when I first met you, Jerry, I, I think it was uh, at a Bible conference right there at the Bible school. And I think I, 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 I shared that that particular year. And the main verse that I was using was Acts chapter 26, verse 16. And to me, that's, for me, that's a foundational verse in my heart. There, there the Lord made known His Son as everything there is to know. Everything there, that there is to know, everything that there will ever be to know. It's literally all about Jesus, right there in that verse. And the translation that I love reading, because I've studied it out, uh, and it's, it's a perfect translation of the passage, is, is this where uh, it's James Murdoch's translation of the Syriac Peshito, and Jesus says this, I have appeared unto thee, not a message, not a teaching, not a concept. I have appeared unto thee. And he says, for this purpose, to constitute you a minister and a witness of this. This is what you will be a minister of, because this is what you will wit what you have and will continue to witness of this thy seeing me because it's me you've seen and of thy seeing me hereafter from this moment onward the same exact thing that the lord told joshua that we read a while ago he said this day will i begin to magnify thee in the sight of israel See, Joshua was great. Israel just didn't know how great Joshua was. Joshua is a type of the risen Christ. We just don't know how great the risen Christ is. So we never want to capsulate anything. We, we never want to capture it. We never want to come to the place concerning the scriptures, concerning the Lord, that we can actually say, I, I've got it, or I totally understand it. Or I think you guys may have heard this uh, this, 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 this phrase there at the Bible school, uh, pigeonhole. Have you guys heard that? Pigeonhole? No? You guys may hear it. I heard it a lot. <laughs> but what it means, it, it's, it basically means this. Okay, now I've got that. And then every time you hear something related to that, you put it in that same exact spot. Yeah, that's where it belongs. That's where it goes. And all it is is we just captured something, some term, some phrase, or some sentence in the Bible, and then anytime we think, come across something that's related to it, we just stick it back in there and we say, okay, now I've got it. Here's my little bag of tricks, kind of. I've got it now. And you, you can't capture life. You can't capture uh, light. You, you can't do that. It's, it's impossible. You can't capture it. Now, Maybe in the physical realms, some scientist can do something like that. I don't know. But if it pertains to life, who Christ is, you cannot. And all, all, uh, all the terms of the Bible are declaring this one and this one only. They're only declaring Him and Him only. So, because they're declaring Him, we can't take them and, and capture them in a sense. When, here's another thing too, in studying, in reading and in studying and in learning the scriptures, the, I'll, I'll say it this way, the understanding that has governed my, my own heart has changed a whole lot. It has changed, and it should, and it should continue. Now, do you remember that? Well, I think it was one of the very first diagrams I had them print for you guys. It, it had like it looked like this. You guys, remember that one? 
where there's the understanding of man, then there's the understanding of the scripture, the testimony, and then the understanding of God himself. It always, it always comes to a point, and at that point, you find Christ. When, it, when it's concerning the Lord, when it's concerning God, even, <clears throat> even our scriptures right here, it always comes to a point and that's where you find the Lord, at that one point. Um, there's another... How much time we got? Yeah, I think we can do it. We've got some time. There's another uh, reason why, why it's good to use the Strong's Concordance or any Bible dictionary uh, that's going to look at the original terms is because sometimes the word that is used in the English language or whatever language doesn't always mean the same thing in the same places. Okay? I've, I've got an example. Uh, I, I looked up this example online. It's a real good example. But just to give you an idea of what, I'm, of what I mean right here. It's always good to check out words. You know, remember how, I think it was last class, that when you're reading and just reading and a word pops out or a word catches your attention, it's good to study that word out, just to do a short study on it if you can. And if it interests you more, then keep on, continue, you know, go further with it with like different dictionaries, different uh, lexicons, just like that with a particular term. Look at this one uh, verse. This is Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew. <clears throat> Chapter, <coughs> excuse me, chapter 3, verse, well, I'll start, I'll, we'll just read verse 1 and 2 from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. It says, in those days came John the Baptist, uh, in those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All right? Came saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, <clears throat> I know when you look at that word repent, you have your idea of what it means. I know that I have my idea of what it means. And then we can actually look at that word in the, original, in the original language, look at the original definition of what it says and see what it originally meant. Okay? But even if we see what it originally meant, we are still... It, ha it has no effect until the Lord makes it known in His Son Himself. All right? So I'm going to do that just real quick. I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. In those days, verse, with verse 1, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All right. I'm going to look at the word repent. It's Strong's number 3340. Metaneo, metanoeo, something like that is a Greek term. Uh, and it basically says this for the strongest concordance. From two other, two other words make this one word. And it means to think differently or afterwards, that is reconsider. Moral, feel, compunction, repent. Okay, well that's what that means. I'm going to take it a step further because I know that in another Bible dictionary, it takes it a step further. And it's going to take me a while to find it in that one. <laughs> Excuse me. Close. Close. I'll do it on my phone real quick. 
I don't have this particular app installed on my on my iPad, but I do on my phone. And it was Matthew three two. All right. And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, Strong's number 3340. This is this is Thayer's Greek lexicon. Thayer's. It's a different, it's another, it's different than the Strong's, but it's kind of like the Strong's, but it's a little more in depth than the Strong's. And this is what it says. Change one's mind, that is repent. To change one's mind for better. Heartily to amend with abhorrence of one's past sins. Okay? What it basically means is a change. Now here it said change one's mind. I've read in uh, different dictionaries, lexicons, where it says to change one's heart. It's a change from one to another. When John the Baptist comes in and saying repent, when Jesus himself comes in and starts saying the same word, repent, it means this. A lot of times we can think the word repent means, oh, I'm sorry for doing this. I'm sorry I did that. Forgive me, Lord, I repent. I'm sorry I did that. Okay? Does that, does that sound familiar? Yep. It should. It should. Okay? It should. Because that word also, in that way, is used in the Bible. Jesus, uh, when, when he was giving the woes, woe to you, city, da-da-da-da, because, you know, if Jonah would have showed up uh, doing, you know, the way he showed up, then you probably would have repented. Or, woe to you, because the queen of Sheba, when she came to see Solomon, you know, she repented. But all... The miracles Jesus did in those cities, with all the miracles that he did, those people in those cities did not repent. And that's the word right there, repent. And the thing is this, is that we can at some time, you know, like the way we were look, looking at repent that one way, Lord, forgive me, I repent. I feel sorry, sorrowful, remorse for doing something. Forgive me for that. I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me. Repentance, okay? That's one term of repentance. The one we just saw right here with Matthew chapter 3 is a totally different form of repentance. With this repentance, it's not so much, oh, Lord, forgive me for this, because, remember, Lord, forgive me for what I did. You, can you guys see that? Yes, perfect. I can't see it in the own reflection, but okay. This is the man. This is the man right here that never pleases God. Christ, his son, on the other hand, always pleases the Father. When a person's born again, Christ is their life. Now, remember the word repentance? Lord, listen to this, Lord, forgive me of what I thought or of what I did or whatever. We're looking at this man. Lord, forgive me and the repentance right here in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, where John the Baptist says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, is this. We're no longer focused here. We're no longer feeling sorry for what we did or what that man did. But there is a change, a turning, a change of mind, a change of heart onto this one. And that is true repentance. When 
when it's not just forgive me for doing this, Lord, though that is good. There should be sorrow, sorrowful. We, we should be sorry when we do something that doesn't please God. But true repentance is when our heart turns unto the Lord. A change. A change from the focus of one object to the focus of another object. That's true repentance. I'm going to look up one last verse. Whoa, I'm already out of time. <laughs> Forgive me for that, guys. I didn't, I didn't catch the, um, the time there. But uh, you, can, you can look at it if you want, that word in the strong concordance, uh, repent or in different um, uh, dictionaries or lexicons. But that's the true repentance right there, coming from one to the other. Now, real quick, the first time we repent is when the Lord brings us from this state unto life being present. The very first time we repent. Every time after that is when the Lord redirects now our heart from, listen to this, listen to this, from what was, because there's a difference right there. What was times past to what is. This day, I will begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel. This day. And you can read all the verses. Look unto me and be saved. That's true repentance. So that's just one of the terms that I wanted us to look at with a strong concordance. Uh, just to see that there's something more there than what we think. And even when we've done that, even when we've when we've seen it, you know, divided and and written out or explained, it still has to be presented to the Lord to serve His purpose, to truly come unto the Lord, unto His Son, that our heart would truly come, that our heart would truly turn, that our heart would truly repent. And behold him who's present. So forgive me that I went over a little bit. Uh, but these are different things we can use. Highlighting center column references, the concordance, Bible dictionaries. I know I didn't add commentaries in there, but you can use commentaries as well. But remember, and, and remember, and I think you guys wrote this down in one of our previous classes. L listen, and this is true. I didn't come up with this. This is, this is beyond me, okay? If the thing is of God, it is designed and purposed of God to bring to the person of Christ his Son. And that is a very true statement. If the thing is of God, whatever it is, the Scriptures... Strong Concordance, Center Column References, Bible Dictionaries, Bible Commentaries. If it is of God, it is designed and purposed of God to bring to the person of His Son. That's what He gives it for. So, I'll leave you guys with that. Uh, we'll see you in our next class. Lord bless you guys. Ah. Amen. Oh, one last thing. Does anybody have any questions? Forgive me for that. I, I forgot about the questions. No? Good to go. Okay. We'll see you in our next class, guys. Whoops.